Hi, welcome to VNN. Today we are moving away from politics and other mundane matters to the exciting world of theatre, where imagination and characters come alive to offer a glimpse of the life around us. We have with us two theatre personalities from the drama group The Hive, Darshanar Tucker and Jimish Tucker, who will be staging a unique play in Rampton this month. Welcome to the VNN, Jimish Darshanar. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. you Thanks so much. For having us. <laughs> Uh, to start off, now tell us something about the Hive, your group. So Hive originated uh, from Dubai actually. So we started the Hive Performing Arts in Dubai. Mm -hmm. We started with uh, 15, 20 kids teaching drama and then we... Oh, it was a children's theatre yeah, group? It was the, okay, okay, yeah, Though Jamish was in the theatre uh, from more than a decade, uh, mm -hmm. past 20 years has been theatre, doing uh, just community theatre. But last five years, uh, we started working with the kids and we started... Uh, the Hive. So we started with 20 kids and we till late we have more than 400 kids coming to the Hive there. So here we are also incorporated at the Hive and we want to start new challenges at the new Hive. Yeah. And how many how many productions, how many plays have you presented so far? Um, so I, my first play was um, Othello back in uh, 2002. Shakespeare to start with. Shakespeare to start with. <laughs> uh, couldn't have asked for it. Yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, since then, I've, I've done about um, 30 odd productions and in, in various capacities. Uh, be it sort of, you know, acting, of course, is my first so All in the English language? All in English okay. language. I've, I've done a couple um, in Hindi, uh, and I've done um, one in Gujarati for the first time here in Canada. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, overall, I've done about 30 odd productions. Um, and, and, and so far, it's, uh, it's, it's been amazing. And uh, which has been the most sort of a crowd pulling? Uh, the... uh, yeah, crowd pulling, there. There, there have been uh, two actually. One is um, the play we call, uh, we call it, it, it's called the Miracle Worker, and it was yeah. based on the life of Helen Keller. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, right, right. Know, and, uh, it's yeah. always a yeah. The subject great was team. amazing because uh, you know the, the the young one, you know, eventually grew up to yeah, become a leader, but she was she was um, blind, she deaf, blind, yeah. and deaf. She was uh, she couldn't talk, and the life was um, you know uh, just um, uncharted. It was. Yeah. So we, we did that version. Uh, that that was a, it was accepted very well. And then just before coming, we did uh, Sherlock. Sherlock. Okay. So yeah, that that I guess. Um, so it's always a mix between you know content and uh, the numbers. So which any one? any comedy? Um, <laughs> back in the day, we've done. Um, uh, I think we've done would be so. gentlemen. Okay. So again, uh, we've done that. We've done black comedy. Peter Schaffer. So it, it's been a mix, but mm -hmm. I've, I've kind of more gravitated towards um, sort of issues that are more human issues. You know, more. So what do you think, what is important in a play? Um, story or characters? I think content, content. is king. The, the script is penultimate. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and kudos to you know, everybody who's, who's taken up writing and you know, got into play, you know, any form of writing. I think content is king, so script is, is everything to us. It's, uh, and of course, to bring that, to bring that uh, into life is, is then the skill of the actor. Yeah. What about um, the audience? They play an important role, isn't it? Any play, I mean, in a sort of, either in a participatory manner or as a sort of receptive audience, uh, are, what do you think? They play the most important role as far as, you know, an, an actor's sort of life is concerned because the feedback is almost immediate. Mm -hmm. And once you get used to this kind of feedback, then, you know, uh, you know, working in films or television or just in front of the camera, then it becomes secondary. Um, so you, it's, it's amazing to be able to kind of perform and get that immediate feedback from the audience there and there. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, everything is, is for that moment, for that look, for that, that applause, that reaction. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the piece of cake. And finally, when we say, you know, when we wrap up the show and we were standing in for the curtain call, that feedback tells us how good or bad the show is, uh -huh. and it's almost to me. So they're they're penultimate. Yeah. So what do you think? I mean, is there a need for a sort of a, a traditional setting for a theatre for a drama? Like a, there should be a permanent structure, stage, or it can be street theatre. I mean, you know, drama exists in all forms. Having said that, um, yes, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, a home is required. You know, for for any craft to be able to flourish, you you have to feel easy. You know, you you got to feel at home. So yes, you you have to have your go-to place where you go and practice and perfect the craft. But eventually, the stage can be anywhere. So rehearsal space is what we probably 
need. That's what you mean. Yeah. You need a rehearsal space. So you need a rehearsal space, and uh, you need your you, you need your go-to auditoriums where you can uh, where that's and you're not worried about um, you know uh, the scalability and the technical aspects of how the certain basics are covered. And one, once that is there, then you know you kind of scale it up and down to wherever you want to go. Which yeah, for technical issues, I mean, if you want light, sound, then of course you need a, a, a auditorium or something. Yeah, but with street theater, what is it? Then just loud music and uh, yeah, with street what, what theater, it's it's your body's your instrument, so you just just take it forward. So yeah, again again a very popular form uh, back in India, especially. Yeah. Um, but here, I, I of course we haven't haven't uh, been here long enough to be able to know if it's done uh, well yet. But I would I would like to go and do that one day. Again. It should be interesting. That will be. Well, there is an uh, experiment is like this flash mob dancing and Absolutely. maybe something like that is an impromptu five minute drama. <laughs> yeah, because uh, what has happened, uh, you know, with with um, with how people have taken to digital media, content is becoming richer. Yeah. So uh, yes, you know, flash plays uh, and 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 those kind of concepts, especially for social causes, yeah. um, in in public spaces, would be great. So what uh, do you think that uh, theatre can support education in any way? I mean, is it um, or is it just entertainment? Absolutely not. I think uh, theater or performing arts, and I would choose the word drama, is a life skill. Life skill yeah. 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 I think, uh, um, you know, and I, I have I have felt it myself. Um, I, I guess back in the day, it would take me 20 minutes to be able to make eye contact with you, let alone, you know, give, tell you my name. So, but, but theater has taught me that, you know. So, the theater has taught me to fake it. Yeah, but that's what they call drama bars. Yeah, drama no, bars. Everybody is a drama bars. But it's a life skill, you know, confidence and communications yeah, and creativity true. and team building and restraints and constraints and just being able to work on a budget, work with a team, work with a timeline. Sometimes not knowing uh, when the show is. I think it's it's a life skill. So uh, uh, it should no more. I, I always keep telling the parents of the children who come in, you know, um, send the, who trust us with the children, yeah, yeah. send them to the hive to learn drama is that um, this is education, don't take it as a vocational skill. It, this is a part of life and it should be, you know, rehearsing should be as frequent as brushing your teeth. So, do you think all theatre is sort of a reflection of life, of society, is it? Or some of it just experiments which has no relevance at all to life? Yeah. Um, wow, nice question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think all, all sorts of theatre is being, um, yeah. you know, all sorts of stories are being written. Uh, the ones that I guess penetrate are yeah. the ones that we can relate to ourselves. Right. So, in in those words, if if it is a reflection of whatever is happening in the society, then those are sort of absorbed faster. Mm -hmm. However, if there are subjects where if I'm not able to relate to it, I may I may see it for the aesthetics, I may see it for the the technicalities, but to be able to relate to it, it may take a while. Having said that, a um, lot of it is futuristic, a lot of it is surreal. So, you know, so be it. Once the story is there, it must be told. Now, see, uh, I mean, now we find there's a lot of uh, fusion between stage and video and film. Uh, there are film dioramas at the background of this, when a drama is being enacted. Yeah. I mean, uh, what, is there a future in that or is it just a passing phase? No, I think, I, I think there's a lot of future in um, sort of the digital world entering the, sort of the life space. Again, it's uh, again with the way content is being handled, mm. um, the amalgamation is is almost natural, and and so what if it it is used if technology is used to assist, um, you know we, you know, you know, be it while 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 the big screen live action is happening, yeah, right. uh, you know the close ups are being projected on onto the digital screens or you know the afterthoughts or the the inner subtext of the characters being projected. So. Whatever it takes um, for for the medium to be a lot more interactive. I, I mean, there was this, uh, these productions called Shen Yun, the Shen Yun productions. You know, ma massive screens and movie. Uh, it's a movie-like thing, projections going on. Yeah. And you find a person on the stage. He suddenly jumps up, and then you find him flying. Yeah. So you've yeah. already taken those shots. He's flying in the sky and comes back, and then lands suddenly again on back on the stage. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. It's just spectacle. Yeah, it's a spectacle and, and, and it's getting theatrical, it's getting cinematic. Yeah. And um, I guess whatever it takes to sort of, um, you know, bring back the, the oomph. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what are your ideas to sort of um, enhance the theatre experience? Having done community theatre, yeah. uh, I'm unable to kind of still find my, f you know, passion for to turning into sort of professional theatre, if I may say. Okay. Because the, the, the intent is different. Yeah. The intent is, uh, I don't know, it's, 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 um, it's more um, community, it's more connected, it's more real, it's more passion. 
there isn't, um, you know, finally, eventually, there isn't any, uh, we're not running in a race for any sort of money, you know. Mm. It's, it's there to, you're, you're there to perfect your craft, you're there to, you know, be together, and you're there to kind of, you know, uh, go ahead with the journey together. So it's, um, I, I, I like this. It's, um, but of course, you, you know, we all... Yeah, everybody takes the onus of being the captain of the ship yeah, in yeah. community theatre. Where, you know, everybody's like, bring in something from... Uh, can I help you with sponsorship? Can I help you with this? Can I do this? Because it's just a teamwork, right? So you have a lot of volunteers uh, with you? Or? Yeah, everybody yeah, is so pretty much volunteering. Yeah. All the sort of, uh, you know, we're, we're all in for the craft. So, uh, apart from acting, you know, people double up and they, you know, some of them are working into costumes, some of them are helping us with sets, some of them are helping us sort of find sponsors, rehearsal spaces. Yeah. So it's all, you, you, don't, you don't wear one hat. Yeah. But what, I mean, have you tried experimental theatre? What is experimental theatre? No props and is that it? Some may call it bare minimal. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, they, we have done, you know, uh, at the Hive, we, we used to host a night called Matchstick Monologues. Now, these are nothing but sort of short theatrical snatches mm -hmm. presented by actors, you know, uh, of, and the durations being sort of 30 seconds all the way yeah, to 10 okay. minutes. And these are these solo pieces, uh, and, and, and they just go on. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's just spoken word, sometimes it's dialogue, sometimes it's prose, sometimes poem. Sometimes it's, uh, uh, you know... There's music to the background. Man, right? you, know, you know, bringing in acoustic music. So, um, it's all experiment. We, we need to be able to experiment to be able to say, okay, here's... You know, it's, it's digging in within. Yeah. And, and this is a new thing, black light. Oh, oh yeah. Just, um, <laughs> just luminescence on the stage and... Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty so excited to, in fact, experience a lot of that ourselves yeah. here. Here, yeah. it's quite popular here in schools and... Uh, yeah, and, uh, so we're, we're, that we're and, and, like and, that, you know, yeah. puppet theatre for that matter yeah. and, and quite so many just forms exist and, and Toronto is sort of 40 minutes yeah. away. Uh, the Fringe Festival is exciting. Uh, you know, of course, we've seen shows from Broadway come over, so we're quite excited to explore the scene. Most here. of the community schools, uh, schools are going to present this black light. Uh, dramas, I think, uh, in the, the, this month, March, yeah? April, yes. What is it? Oh. Most of in Brampton, Mississauga, okay. most of the schools are this, uh, so this competition between classes in Blacklight. Oh, so really? one full evening, it's all uh, Blacklight shows. Oh, really? Oh, quite, quite and, inter uh, very interesting. Oh, you should see some of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah They're all, no, I didn't, It's open to public. Must be for high schools then. Yeah. High schools, yes. Ah, okay. Then. So what made you choose uh, 12 Angry Jurors? I mean, it's a, it's a fantastic play. Yeah, it's uh, classic. Which, yeah, I think you said in one of your releases that it's very relevant today also, all the prejudices. and It is very relevant today. Um, the idea was to find a script that uh, that one can relate to A mm -hmm. and bring in uh, an ensemble of actors, ensemble of talent yeah. uh, on stage. And, and no better than this script because... Um, you know, the plot is amazing. A 19-year-old has been charged... Found murdered, yeah. Ma murdering murder his father. Child, yeah, yeah. And um, the, there's a case going on, the case going on for six days, and the judge has finally awarded him the death penalty at the age of 19. And it's now in the hand of 12 sort of capable Your, people, ordinary people like you and me from all walks of life, to be able to, uh, you know, bring a unanimous verdict whether this boy is guilty or not. So, uh, the play opens with that. Yeah. The boy has been given the death sentence, and these 12 people now decide the fate of this 19-year-old. And one guy says, well, everybody opens this as an open and shut case. A 19-year-old from a particular uh, sector of the society, part of the society, if he does something, he must be guilty. Yeah. So there you go. It's, it's sort of prejudice, social prejudice, right from the word go. And everybody says, yes, of course, guilty. Yeah. Until this one gentleman says, uh, no, I believe there is reasonable doubt. And, and that, that upsets, opens upsets and that opens up sort of the can of worms. Yeah. And uh, then, you know, evidence gets re-examined, personalities are out, and uh, then eventually the, the, the case becomes a backdrop, but we, you know, the, the personalities of the jurors come out, and then we see what's, what's influencing their decision. And uh, so are we, right? It's, it's just natural. We, I think our mind has formulated now uh, all these form, you know, yeah. preconceptions saying if, if person A is from person B or, you know, background B, then it, the result must be C. That's it. So, uh, but to be able to give a death penalty on such uh, formulas, uh, wow. So, so, what's next after the 12 angry jurors? Community, uh, you said the workshops for uh, children? Yeah, we have an ongoing workshop okay, for the okay. kids going on and we'll be doing, uh, we'll be uh, putting out play Jungle Book in okay, June well, that's, that's with right. the kids, yeah. So that's that's there. Plus, we're doing um, 
workshop with Brampton Libraries. Okay. Uh, so mm -hmm. we are tied up, uh, you know, collaborating with the Brampton okay. Library and doing the acting workshop for the adults, which is a free workshop for the residents of Is it, is it of ongoing? No, it will start it in will April. It will start in April. Yeah, April. Yeah, that's very and nice. it's once a week uh, classes for okay. till end of June. And that would okay. terminate into uh, the matchstick monologue, which Jimish says, okay. you know, uh, monologue nights. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's uh, interesting times ahead. Again, we're just setting our feet here. So we've got sort of workshops happening for children uh, out of the library. So they, they come and, you know, take weekly drama lessons with us. Uh, then that sort of progresses into them stepping on stage. So they are doing the Jungle Book now. Uh, we're doing a community theatre production for adults. Uh, in April, we are starting uh, sort of theatre workshops for adults. And mm. this is free. So uh, the idea is to really, you know, just, just spread our wings out and, and just encourage people to get back on stage. Anyway, thanks a lot, Darshana and Jamesh. And uh, it was quite interesting to talk to you about theatre. Yeah, thank and, uh, you. Thank you so much for uh, having us. All the thank best. You. Yeah. Doing more drama bars, <laughs> how, how do you call it? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Yeah. And uh, 12 Angry Jewelers um, hits the stage 20th and 29th yeah. of March 2020. We got four it, shows. We got four shows, uh, you know, 3 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're not doing anything particular that, that evening or yeah, over the weekend, please do come and watch. Yeah, and yeah. Thanks yeah. for having us. Thank you so much for having Thanks. us.